In November of 2016, a Tumblr user named Cummy Eyelids received a package from a woman she met on the site. When she opened the package, she found that inside of it was a jar. And inside of the jar, there was a severed human toe. But this was a good thing. You see, Cummy Eyelids had been expecting this toe. Cummy Eyelids had very special plans for this toe. A project the likes of which she had never attempted before. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the tale of the Tumblr Toe Necklace. This video is sponsored by Raycon. I've had my Raycon earbuds for a few years now and I still use them all the time to listen to music or podcasts. Wear them a lot when I'm going for runs. I hate doing cardio, but you know, having it helps. And they stay in for that. Look, I'm shaking my head and they're not falling out. The everyday earbuds have a great look and feel with optimized gel tips for the perfect in-ear fit. Raycon offers 8 hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life. With their built-in mic, you can take calls at the press of a button. And Raycon start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And they come with a 30 day happiness guarantee. If you don't like them, just send them back. It's no wonder that Raycon's everyday earbuds have over 48,000 five star reviews. Just click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash wang. You'll get 15% off your Raycon purchase. From the moment it surfaced, the Tumblr toe necklace post was destined to become one of Tumblr's most infamous of all time. It pretty much instantly gave people flashbacks to the stolen human bones incident which had happened a year prior. The initial post was made by user Kami Eyelids, aka Lana, it's anal backwards, from Dabachusetts. A few days ago, I received a very special package I the mail. It contained this amputated human toe, belonging to the lovely, royally oily. Like, literally, this is a toe off of her foot. I'll be changing the solution, putting it in a new pretty jar, and potentially making it into a wearable pendant. Taking on this project is so super meaningful to me, more so than any other jewelry project I've taken on, including the engagement ring. I'm so appreciative of her trust in me, and I'm so excited to get to work on this. And as you can see from its appearance, this toe has definitely been sitting in that jar for a while. No longer fit for human consumption, but I mean, probably still good enough for a nice piece of jewelry. And note that Lana wasn't just some random woman that got sent the toe for no particular reason. She had a store that sold handmade jewelry, as well as household items that often involved animal teeth and bones. But at this point, she had never actually done anything involving human body parts. The woman who sent this toe, Royally Oily, aka Haley, was overjoyed. Literally brought tears to my eyes. I am so grateful and excited myself. Not only do I absolutely trust your artistic expertise, cummy eyelids, but I also feel my body part, yes, an actual piece of me, could not be in more capable hands. I know you will respect and care for my little piggy. I appreciate this more than you'll ever really know. And the next reply to her, of course, is what many were thinking. Hey guys, just a quick question. What the fuck is going on over here? And before they could clarify, this post spread all over Tumblr. Tumblr, where white hosts sending other white hoes their pinky toes. IDK about yeah, but I wish someone would have the love and dedication to send me a toe. Just saying. Pretty quickly, this post makes its way off of Tumblr. Facebook, Sunday Night Football. Twitter, Westworld was crazy. Tumblr, a girl cut off her toe and sent it to another girl to make a pendant. And as the story spreads further and further from its initial source, all different kinds of details get confused and added out of nowhere. A lot of people seem to assume this is some kind of sex thing or a romance thing. You even had AOL report that Lana was Haley's fiance. And others had assumed that Haley had just kind of chopped her toe off in the moment and mailed it to her like on some kind of Yakuza shit. A lot of these details were later clarified by Haley in a response to insider reporter Jacob Shamsian. Like for starters, why exactly is this toe not attached to your body? She explains that as a child, she had a condition called brachymetatarsia. I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. I don't know if it's brachy like brach or if it's brachy like my achy brachy metatarsia. In any case, this condition features one or more of your toe bones being abnormally short, causing it to sit on your foot like so. And in 2008, when Haley was 17, the condition was getting more painful and it was causing her a lot of skin infections. So, her doctor suggested just amputating it. Note that the jar says 2011 and not 2008, and that's apparently because that's when the preservative ectoplasm inside of it expired. 
five years before Lana received it in the mail. Although Lana didn't complain about it being stinky or anything like that, so I guess the fluids were still doing what they do. But why hold on to it for so long? I kept it because I keep all my teeth and hair. It seemed natural to keep my toe. I've known intuitively since a young age to keep my body parts. She explains that she wants to be cremated when she dies, although however her loved ones choose to dispose of her body, it's up to them, with one condition, they keep the body together. I just picture some kind of Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest type scenario, where her family members are going all across the world to retrieve her body parts and put them back together. But I mean, fair enough, I think that if I ever had a body part removed, I would want to do the same thing. From what I've heard, some of these doctors get real stingy about giving you your body parts back after they cut them off, and it's like, yo, I'm already giving you way too much money. It's, there's no free lunches here. Give me my body parts back, doc. You want my toe? Pay me for it. But then, so you have the toe, why make it into jewelry? Above all, the most important thing for me is that it's preserved. It's hard to explain how much I love my toe. People are so caught up in it being weird that they've overlooked that it's a part of me. I actually get depressed sometimes just thinking about how it was a part of me and now it's not. I know that sounds insane, but whatever, it's just true. And she goes on to explain that she feels a sense of guilt for having removed it. In a way, she thought it helped her develop the thick skin that she has now as an adult. Having a fucked up toe shaped her personality in ways that she came to appreciate. An example that she gives is that her cousin was bullying her about the toe and called her stubby and at some point locked her in a cabinet for hours at a time. Clearly something that would be a formative experience to a young mind. So she felt that by turning it into jewelry and keeping it on her all the time, it would kind of get rid of some of the guilt she felt for having removed it now. And I can kind of understand where she's coming from with this. I mean, if you have this deformity that it, it shaped your personality in certain ways and made you the person that you are. And now as an adult, you're walking around with your personality being the way that it is because of this, but you've removed the source of it. In some way, it almost feels like kind of like a stolen valor type of thing. Even though these characteristics are coming from real experiences, not having the physical thing there might almost make them feel inauthentic. And in terms of her vision for the actual piece of jewelry, she wanted a big bulky piece with a gothic aesthetic and maybe some steampunk elements. Which, looking at Kami Isla's work, it's definitely a good choice for this type of jewelry. In fact, Haley had actually contacted other artists before this, but Kami Islets was the first one to actually accept the job. Unfortunately, I can't seem to find how the necklace turned out. If I do come across it somehow, I'll keep you updated on it. In any case, after this post went viral, Kami Islets began to be approached by a lot more people about making more human body part jewelry. You got teeth, ribs, pieces of brain. It's not clear how any of these specific pieces turned up, although ultimately it does seem like she eventually would get into collecting and working with more human body parts. As it was in January of 2018 that Kami eyelids would go viral once again. This time for a pair of posts regarding real human skeletons. In one of them, she's simply posing with a real skull, handsome skull friend and I. And in another, one of her friends found a young female partial skeleton at a flea market and bought it for 30 bucks. The flea market claimed that this specimen was obtained from a university. But people were suspicious of the origins of these skeletons. Another fucking bone thief? So this post blows up, she's viral once again, with only a surprisingly few amounts of people putting together that, wait, this is Kami Eyelids, this, the toe necklace girl. And the people disturbed by this go into a bunch of different factions. Like you have the ones who are merely disgusted by the idea of buying a human skeleton at all. Why the fuck would you buy a child's skeleton and for what fucking purpose? Because it's fucking cool as fuck. Others question the ethics of the sourcing. Honest opinion? You probably shouldn't keep her. A human body old enough to have been carelessly discarded from a university probably wasn't from a time when university cared if their anatomical specimens were obtained through ethical means. Whoever that girl was, she and her family quite possibly did not consent to her body being used after her death, and keeping her remains consequentially might not be the most morally sound thing to do. Honest opinion? We don't care. If you don't personally collect human remains, then your opinion is not relevant right now. Smiley face XO. People start digging through a history to see what other kinds of weird shit they could find to be upset by, and sure enough, they did find this. Vials of real human bone dust for only seven bucks. I could just imagine some chick bringing this to a party and getting her vial of real human bone dust mixed up with her vial of cocaine. It's a good way to get an ancient curse in your sinuses. 
Ultimately though, after the second burst of virality, Kumi eyelids would delete the flea market post and people largely went on their own way. So where are they now? Kami Eyelid's store, Pastel Alien Shop, is still active, although, you know, there's no human pieces for sale. There's a lot of cement statues and planters, crystal pieces, and a few that incorporate animal bones. Honestly, I think a lot of this stuff is actually cool as fuck. As for Royally Oily, the woman who sacrificed her toe for the jewelry, it appears that she deleted her Tumblr account and a few years later had her username taken by an account that appears to be a blog about babies that posts resources for women who are struggling to get pregnant. Stuff about doing yoga to get pregnant better? I don't know if it would be better or worse that the person who owns this pregnancy blog knows the history of that username. But anyway, that's the story of the Tumblr toe necklace. If you like this video, check out my video about the Tumblr witch who used real human bones. I'm out.